what is criminology eg is it like looking at crime scenes i think there's about 400 people in the course what career paths are you looking into after your degree i still don't really know whether i want to work in like a prison or in the police force i don't know if you really count this as like a field trip it's definitely not like it in the movies are you planning to do a master's in psychology or criminology there would be times in my lectures where i'd just be sat there like i'm so bored like oh Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Since we're fast approaching Christmas and winter, today I thought to go for some like cozy vibes. So go make yourself a hot drink and get yourself settled for this chilled sit down video. So I realized over the last few years of having my YouTube channel, I've often spoken about what it's like studying psychology and I've taken you through what a day in the life is and I've given my like reviews. But I've noticed I never really mention the criminology side of my degree. If you're new here, hi, my name is Gaia and I'm I'm a fourth year psychology of criminology combined honours degree student at Nottingham Trent University. And I've just realised including combined honours in that makes it sound really fancy. I've also noticed that the last Q&A that I did where I spoke about my degree as a whole was really popular with you guys. So today I'm going to be answering all of your questions about what it's like studying criminology. As always, I asked all of you lovely people on Instagram to send in a couple of questions. So thank you so much to everyone who did. If you would like to send in some questions next time I do a Q&A or would just simply like to follow my life whenever I am not posting YouTube videos then my Instagram handle is at guycallyx. While you're at it you can also follow my TikTok because I also post a few uni slash kind of lifestyle videos on there and I'm trying to be a bit more consistent nowadays. So if you do like the sound of today's video go click that like button right now. If you go do that it really helps share my channel to other people that might be interested in watching my content and if you're new and you'd like to stick around for more university advice lifestyle and student vlogs then go click that subscribe button as well there's a little bit for everyone so yeah other than that let's get on with the rest of the Q&A so to kick off today's Q&A the first question I'm gonna answer is what is criminology e.g. is it like looking at crime scenes and fingerprints so criminology is kind of a branch of like psychology but mostly like sociology and it is the study of crime and human behavior it also ties in other areas of study such as philosophy and biology. If you're interested in a career in criminology then major employers include central and local government, police, the court system, probation service, sometimes also non-profit organisations such as the NHS and charities that work with maybe victims of crime or young offenders. Possible careers themselves if you were to study criminology would include police officer, social worker, detective, crime scene investigator. If you are planning to have a career in the criminal justice system and like the courts then chances are you probably might work with crime scenes and fingerprints but when it comes to studying fingerprints and crime scenes are things you're going to see instead in a forensic science course rather than criminology. So the next question is are the class sizes big? So as I mentioned before I go to Nottingham Trent University and I don't do a criminology degree on its own I do psychology and criminology however it is quite popular it's obviously not as popular as say if you just studied psychology on its own. I think for those class sizes they tend to be like 600 people in like the whole year whereas for psychology or criminology I think there's about 400 people in the course like 300 to 400 like in my year group which is still a lot of people when you compare that to other courses. Since lectures are really just designed for the lecturer to just like talk at you and everyone just to listen and write notes we do tend to have lectures like all together. Um, obviously if it's only like a 300 person lecture hall they will divide us into two different like groups for the lectures so half the cohort will have a lecture on say Tuesday and the other half will have it say on Wednesday. When it comes to seminars because of the fact that they're designed to be much smaller and the whole point of them unlike lectures is to sit down with your lecturer work through kind of class activities and make sure you actually like understand the material that you got taught in lectures so even though for the psychology parts of 
of my degree, I'd have like seminars of say like 60 people. When it came to criminology, it was like slightly smaller. I think it was like 30 people in like a class. And we'd probably have those like three or four times a week, depending on like what modules we have that year. So as you can see, it's not like super overwhelming, especially for seminars at least. It's almost like a normal classroom size that you'd have in like secondary school or like sixth form. The next question is, do you get to choose your criminology modules? And also are they interesting? Considering that I'm not obviously doing just criminology, I'm also doing psychology, the way they structure the degree is that I think in first year you have 60% criminology, 40% psychology and then in second year I think it's like the opposite and then in third year it's pretty much like 80% psychology and then like 20% criminology like I'm pretty sure I only have like one module in third year that's criminology which is a shame. Part of the reason for that is because my dissertation is done in psychology rather than criminology but I'll get further into that later on in the video because I'm pretty sure a few of you have sent in some questions about my dissertation so if you want to hear all about that then go skip to that part of the video. When it comes to core and optional modules I'm not able to pick any criminology modules that I want to do until I get to third year which I think is the case for most university courses. First year I did explaining criminal behaviour, introduction to criminal justice system and understanding crime society. In second year I did a module on penology and then one on policing. In third year, like I said, I got to pick my modules. Bear in mind there was like a bigger list of modules I could have chosen from but the ones I chose, I feel like I'm saying chosen and choose like loads in this by the way, um, but the option that I chose to do was sexual and violent crime. Regarding whether they were interesting or not, in first year I had a bit of a love-hate relationship with the modules because obviously I didn't get to choose them and for some parts they were kind of boring, like I didn't really care about introduction to criminal justice system. I just felt like the way they delivered the lectures were a little dry and from memory I'm pretty sure the lecture every week was on like a Monday day at like six or seven at night and I'm pretty sure I had like a nine to seven day so as you can tell I'm like having quite a jam-packed Monday and by the time I got to seven o'clock I was just like oh I just I can't do this especially during the winter months when it's all dark it was definitely like a struggle trying to force myself to go to that lecture I did enjoy explaining criminal behavior though in first year because that was all about like the theories surrounding offending behavior so that was all about Bentham and the classical school of criminology and rational choice theory and labeling theory and feminism. I did really enjoy learning about all of the things that go into like why someone may offend. In second year I definitely enjoyed penology more than I enjoyed policing because of the fact that again the penology was more about the theories behind um, the penal system and like the penal crisis and stuff and like overcrowding. Personally I find that stuff like really interesting whereas with policing I literally would just have to force myself to go to the lectures like I just didn't really engage in that material that well. Third year I definitely I think enjoyed the most and that was probably because it again it was optional I got to choose that module. As I mentioned I chose to do sexual and violent crime. I know you're probably thinking like why would you enjoy that? Even though a lot of the lectures were very sensitive and heavy and um, it's such a serious topic that is kind of the area of criminology that I find the most interesting. Next question is what career paths are you looking into after your degree? Um, it's kind of up in the air at the moment because I don't really know whether to specifically specialise in a field of psychology or criminology. Knowing me I'm probably going to find like kind of some mid ground. I really do enjoy like forensic psychology and like criminal psychology and it all overlaps really. I think at the end of the day it just really depends like where I picture myself working whether that's in the NHS, whether it's in the police force, prisons, you know, like social work. I haven't really decided on that just yet, but I am hoping definitely to do a career in the field of criminal psychology and forensics. I definitely am interested in having a career somewhere in like analysing like crime scenes, not so much from like a forensic science point of view, but more as kind of like a psychological like detective point of view. I feel like this is probably because I watch a lot of Netflix shows about like crime and I watch a lot of like true crime documentaries and I see all these people being interviewed on TV and I don't know why but I just feel like that's a bit of me. It's either that or I'm probably just going to go into offender profiling or something. The next question is did you do criminology field trips? I don't know if you really count this as like a field trip but in year one we did have the chance to go visit Nottingham's Magistrates Court and just pick a room to walk 
second to I think it was for the module introduction to criminal justice system we got to go in there free I think anyone can really I think it because of the fact that it wasn't a family court we could go sit in I can't really remember I would actually think ours was actually quite interesting because we watched this guy I think he was like schizophrenic basically what had happened was that he kept calling up like emergency numbers like 999 and was requesting like an ambulance or like the police to come around I think he kept calling it on his wife for some reason and what happened because of the fact that he called them so many times they ended up like banning him from like calling these numbers the reason why he got pulled into magistrate's court was because he had called them again another trip that I can think of that we did in first year was again not really like a field trip for one of our assignments for my understanding crime society module we had to go and survey like an area of Nottingham and we had to research average wage and like general quality of life for that area and kind of compare that with how much crime was in that area but again it was actually just like us walking around with the lecturer for like an hour on like a random Friday afternoon so I don't know if it's the same for other criminology or combined honor courses but for my course as you can see we didn't really do like proper field trips you know it wasn't like we visited some crime scene or visited a police station so there were a couple of questions that were very similar surrounding like why I chose criminology why I chose to do psychology criminology rather than forensic psychology I'm pretty sure I probably answered this in the previous Q&A that I did where I spoke about my degree as a whole so sorry if I'm repeating anything but I'm still gonna answer it so one of the A-levels that I chose to study was psychology and honestly I can't even explain like how much I fell in love with the subject. So when it came to looking at universities, I knew I definitely wanted to do a career in psychology because I also know that I really enjoy helping other people. So I wanted to kind of find a career within that. However, a big passion of mine is studying crime. And like most of what I watch on Netflix um, is either like a psychological thriller or some like true crime documentary. But at an undergraduate level, they don't do courses on just solely like criminal psychology, even though the term criminal psychologist is a profession. The reason why I chose to do like a combined honours of psychology and criminology was because a lot of the forensic courses I looked at didn't include enough about crime and offender profiling. Also if they did they didn't do it until third year whereas I wanted a degree that did it like throughout. I did consider doing criminology on its own because of this but then I did realise that there is a massive part of me that does enjoy other like non-criminal aspects of psychology such as biological psychology or or social psychology so I decided that it was probably best for me to do a combined honours of psychology and criminology because I'd be getting like everything I wanted. I also chose a combined honours over just doing criminology because I don't really want to work as like a social worker and I still don't really know whether I want to work in like a prison or in the police force and most students who do single honours straight criminology do that line of profession whereas I still wanted to have that like psychologist door open to me. I'm pretty sure I've also mentioned that another reason why I wanted to do it was so just in case I did get kind of sick of one subject because of the fact that I'd be studying like two that would mean that on those days I just couldn't really stand my criminology modules if that ever happened. I would still have psychology if that makes sense like it kind of breaks it up and you can kind of flip between the two and also another bonus is that theories you learn in criminology you can also use in a psychology essay for example and it will help strengthen your argument and there have been times where I've been writing an essay for say criminology and I'd be like oh my god there is this theory or some model in psychology that would really help back up my argument that I wouldn't have necessarily learned if I'd have just studied criminology. The next question is what's the most interesting lecture you've listened to out of all of the lectures that I did I tended to enjoy the ones more when I was learning about classical theories of criminology and all of those ideas and concepts behind why someone would offend, you know, whether that's from a sociological point of view or a feminist point of view or um, a biological point of view. Throughout my childhood, I've also always enjoyed um, learning about history. So whenever they did a lecture on like the history of prisons and the penal system, I also found that like equally as interesting. Like when it comes to the penal system, punishment itself has really changed. You know, the way that it's come from whipping and drowning people, being accused of witchcraft 
and demonology and how that's changed to things like incarceration, community service, fines. The next question is how gory does it get? Do you have to visit crime scenes? Because of the fact that criminology is more about the theory of crime and studying like punishment and stuff rather than you know forensic science where it's more biological you know like analyzing fingerprints and stuff. Criminology isn't gory I would say at all. Some of the topics are definitely quite sensitive especially when we're looking at rape culture and IPV and like child trafficking but I definitely wouldn't say it's gory. It's definitely not like it in the movies. I know when you think of criminology thoughts of serial killers and crime scenes always pop up but sadly that's not the case. We have never got to visit a crime scene and when it came to serial killers we didn't ever actually get to do like a lecture solely on like infamous serial killers. Like I'm pretty sure they did include Charles Manson once in some lecture but that was more to explain some theory rather than us just sitting there for an hour learning about Charles Manson. It is a shame though because that is the kind of thing that I was hoping for when I first came to NTU to study um, criminology that we get to have all these really cool like field trips. That kind of actually leads on to my next question which is what is something that I would change about my criminology course? So if it was me designing the course I'd definitely do a lot more like interesting field trips. Even if the syllabus isn't like explicitly on say serial killers um, or like offenders I'd try and use them a lot more in case studies to make some of the content a lot more like digestible as like students because there would be times in my lectures where I'd just be sat there like I'm so bored like Oh, I feel like if they'd have used a case study of say Ted Bundy or something it would have definitely like made it a lot more interesting plus it would have also been something that I could have associated that new material with so the next question is did you have to do your diss on either psych or crim or could you choose that's a very quick and easy one I think because of the fact that I do psychology with criminology I had to do my dissertation on something in psychology next question is do you need a DBS check to do criminology the answer is no I I never needed to do it. You need a DBS check obviously when you do like work experience especially when you're dealing with like victims and offenders and you're working in, like prisons. But that obviously comes at like a later stage outside of your degree. When it comes to your degree and its study itself no you don't need any checks, you know you don't need DBS, you don't need to be vetted like you would say on like a policing course. The next question is are you planning to do a master's in psychology or criminology? So because of the fact that I I enjoy both psychology and criminology and they are quite similar. I am being quite open when it comes to masters. I'm trying to find courses that incorporate both psychology and criminology. So anything along the lines of forensic psychology, criminal justice, criminological research, investigative psychology, criminal psychology. Over the last few weeks I have been researching upon researching tons of masters courses that fit within this like massive general area of criminology and forensics and I have reduced my list of masters courses down to about five or six and over the next few weeks I'm going to be applying to those said courses. If you would like to follow along with that make sure you are subscribed and you have the post notifications on because I'm going to be doing a lot of chatty videos about my masters course kind of process and how I'm finding it and what exact universities I am applying to. The plan is though I am hoping to do my masters next year in 2022. As you guys know if you followed me for a while I was hoping to do a few years of travelling before I returned to do my masters and my PhD but because of the pandemic and because everything's so up in the air right now and strangely because of the fact that I do miss the stress of the university and higher education I'm dying to get back in and um, do even more learning and gain another degree. Like I said, I'm gonna vlog all of it so you don't wanna miss out. So the last question I'm gonna answer today so this video doesn't get like super long is, do you prefer forensic psychology or criminology? I've been asked this several times before and I literally never really feel like I have a proper answer because they are very similar and I do love both of them. Like I feel like they overlap a lot and not to wimp out but I don't really feel like I can choose between them. Don't get me wrong, I do love learning about the theories in criminology. However, there are aspects of criminology that I do find rather boring such as learning about probation. I just 
I just can't. So for that reason, forensic psychology is a little bit more interesting. So I don't know, I guess that's kind of my answer. There are pros and cons to both. But if you are someone who doesn't know whether to study forensic psychology or criminology, then I would suggest if you would rather have a career path in psychology, then I would suggest going for forensic psychology. Whereas if you want to go into say social work and into the police and like probation services, I would suggest doing criminology criminology. However, there is no reason why, say, if you did study forensic psychology that you can't go into the probation services. As I mentioned, they do overlap and psychology and criminology are very similar. Employers are more than happy to have either of these degrees or subjects, you know, on your CV, as long as you know you have a general passion for it. And it doesn't hurt to have any relevant work experience to go along with it. So there you have it. That is my little Q&A today about the criminology side of my degree. I really hope you did find this helpful. If you did, please give this video a massive thumbs up and if you haven't already and you'd love to join the family then I suggest clicking that subscribe button right now. Comment also down below if you would like me to do more of these Q&As or you want me to talk more about criminology in my videos. I'd be more than happy to do that. But other than that, I've been Gaia. This has been my little Q&A about studying criminology and I'll see you next time for more content. Bye!